Chris here. So tomorrow is going to be my big travel day where, where I shove off to head up to the Pacific Northwest and hopefully do a whole bunch of exploring along the way. In order to get ready is I've had to do a deep cleaning in the RV. So I kind of wanted to impart some information to you about things that I've learned in case they help you with, with uh, your older RV. When I uh, did the cleaning, there were essentially four areas that I focused on. Uh, one was the carpets, two was my bed, three was the table, and four was the couch. And then a whole bunch of just miscellaneous stuff in between. So let's talk about the carpets. One of the things to do was vacuum the entire RV. Now, fortunately, I have a vacuum cleaner that's been in my car the entire time, sort of in storage while I've traveled. And so I was able to pull that out and use it. And that vacuum cleaner has been great. I got my vacuum cleaner for $8 at Deseret Industries, which is a goodwill type of operation that's local to Utah here. And when I got it, it was all gummed up inside. It was full of old carpet and dust and lint and junk that was all gunked up together. And there were old Cheerios and Fruit Loops in there that were crustified and petrified. And it was pretty disgusting. But once I cleaned all that stuff out, it's been great for eight bucks. I needed to run my generator because you're supposed to run your generator once a month just to keep it clean. It's carbureted. You want to run it periodically to get fresh gas going through the carburetor. And you're supposed to do that with the generator. And it's been about two months since I've run it. So I was due to run mine. So I decided to run my generator to run my vacuum cleaner and sort of kill two birds with one stone there. And I was a little bit nervous that the vacuum cleaner, which is kind of, they're power hungry, they're super power hungry, would overwhelm the inverter generator. Right on the vacuum cleaner, it says 12 amp. Now, one of the great things about having developed the understanding about solar is that you have to learn a little bit about electricity. And one of the things you learn about electricity is that amps times voltage equals watts. My inverter generator is an 1800 watt running generator, meaning it can sustain 1800 watts continuously. So if it's 12 amps times 120 volts, so that was 1440 watts that it would pull continuously and my generator could handle that. So I plugged it in, turned the generator on, let the generator warm up and it did. It ran my vacuum cleaner for the duration of the time that it took me to clean the, the RV out. So that was fun. My RV has the original carpets and I've talked about not removing those, but I also didn't want to walk on my carpets as much as possible because they're old and they're vintage and they're going to see a lot of wear and tear. So my solution was to get area carpets and use those as my primary walking surfaces. And I had gotten a series of carpets of Ikea uh, that I had liked that were relatively inexpensive. So I knew I could replace them once they got worn out, but they were free floating. And the fact that they were free floating was a real problem when I first had them because they tended to bunch up and move around and shift around. And it was just a real pain, especially with my table, which is a removable table. They would get all bunched up around there. So the solution that I came up with was to anchor them to walls and surfaces on the RV using little bungee cords and brackets. So I got these little thing called light duty surface mount D rings. While I was there, I had also seen these little small bungee cords. It was just like, you know, light from heaven opening up, but here's the, here's the solution to your carpet floating problem. So what I did was I mounted these to various places on the RV that I knew I could then string little bungee cords through the carpet to, and those would anchor the carpets. So I knew that I had to have carpets that I didn't mind punching holes through. So if you've got a very expensive set of carpets that you don't want to damage, this might not work, but mine were cheap. My original primary carpet in the living area was a $30 carpet from Ikea and Ikea sells carpets in various sizes, sort of standard sizes. And there was one that was like four and a half feet by six feet. And that was the size that worked really well in my living area. But I did have to cut it in a couple of locations because it was running into a couple of areas or overhanging onto a step. But I didn't mind. Again, this was a carpet that I knew I would probably eventually replace. The newer carpet that I just got was even just slightly smaller. And so it has fit really well. So what I did was I just punched a hole through the carpet that I strung those little bungee cords through 
and then over to the D-mounts. I mounted them to the surfaces with quarter inch number 14 bolts that were either three quarters of an inch or one inch depending on where I put them. And you wanna get the screws that have the Phillips hex head on them and are kind of pointy on the end. You don't want the flat surface because you wanna be able to really screw them in. So I pre-drilled and then I manually screwed them in and they have been very, very solid. So these are fantastic. I do have one free floating rug. I have, I have a couple of smaller free floating rugs, but one in the kitchen area matched one in the living area and it was of the smaller size. And I've kept that free floating. It just moves around and I'm fine with that. So the carpet thing is, is something that took me a while to sort of figure out. Now I have a really good understanding about how to work with free floating rugs in my RV. So the table that I have in here is not original to the RV. My original RV came with a little round table and two little round swivel chairs that would have looked great in marketing material when the RV was new, but they were really not very functional. So I, they were just on screws and I took them out and they were really heavy too. I took those out and there was also a little bar table here for the couch that again, really heavy. I removed it, jettisoned it, never going to use it again. So that opened up this space in here. So my RV did not come with one of those little kitchen breakfast nook types of tables with a little bench on either side. I had kind of hoped to have gotten one, but mine just didn't have that. What I ended up doing was getting a table from Home Depot, like a little work table. They had various sizes here, but it was one of those folding types. And what I loved about it was that I could change this area in case I decided to rework it or do something different with it in the future. But the downside is that it's free floating and you don't want free floating things like that in the RV. So my solution to that was to do something akin to what I had done with the carpet and anchor it to these D rings that I had placed in various locations. And when I was at Home Depot, they had, in addition to the smaller bungee cords, they had a couple of sort of larger bungee cords and the one of the larger bungee cords had a hook on the end that fit perfectly around the leg of the table. And it was just snug enough so that when I stuck it on there, it's tight, but I can still remove it when I need to with a little bit of effort. So what I did was I cut a hole through the carpet because I didn't want to have it strung across the carpet, right? So I'd be tripping across it all the time. So again, same dollar store knife, I cut a little bit of a hole near the end of the table was, and I just strung it, the bungee cord underneath the carpet over to the same D ring that I was attaching the corner bungee cords for the carpet to. I've done that to two of the legs, opposite ends of the couch and then to the table, but two of them weren't enough for me. I also noticed the third type of a bungee cord type of system, but this one wasn't exactly a bungee cord. It was a, uh, like a rubber type of material that had these S hooks on the end that were designed for general purpose securing. They had holes in the middle where you could change the position of the S ring so that you could maximize the use of those. So I got three or four of those that I anchored to the table from the top that then go down to those D rings that I have mounted in a couple of other locations. And what they do is they produce a down pulling force on the table. In one of the mounting locations, I had to actually mount an extra piece of wood because I found that the, the wood material that was being used, it was like some sort of a composite material, wasn't as strong and I didn't think it was up to the job of just holding two bolts through the D ring directly to it. These are just some various things that I figured out over time.